All right, let's get started. We're going to begin today by creating ourselves a new Rails application. So we say Rails Web Orb. We're going to call it Web Orb since that's what we're playing with. You'll see it went ahead and created a new folder called Web Orb. And then inside there, generated a whole bunch of stuff. This is how a Rails app gets generated. We're going to CD into our new Web Orb directory. And we are going to run a command. This is the, we're going to use the plugin command from the Rails uh, framework to install, and we're going to install directly from SVN the Web Orb plugin. You'll see this will actually go and check out from the Web Orb plugin or for Web Orb site and pull out all those files. Now, unfortunately, my bandwidth here at the office is pathetically slow, so uh, this will take just a second while we go ahead and pull this down. You'll see that in here, in addition to pulling down the library, it also puts in some example things. We'll actually take a look at, uh, we're going to make use of one of the samples that they install for us. Almost there now. All right, with that done, uh, we can actually take a look at what we have in this application. So we're going to open up TextMate with our current application, and we'll see that this is what our Rails application looks like. We'll see inside the vendor folder, we do have a web orb folder that has all sorts of things that were just installed for us. In our main app folder, this is the main Rails application, you'll see that in addition to our normal controllers, helpers and view section we also have a services folder and inside here is a class called infoservice.rb um, our info service happens to have one method called get computer info which takes in a request ID parameter uh, and then returns some information about that we're going to take a look at that in just a second so what we want to do is actually connect to this from flex and the way I do that is to create a new flex project I'm going to create a new MXML uh, flex project here. Uh, you'll see I'm actually using the new Flex 3 beta that was just released on Labs this week. Very exciting. Uh, I'm going to call this project Web Orb also. Uh, I'm not going to choose any technology here. We're going to tell it to go ahead and use the default SDK, which is the Flex Moxie. On this screen is where I start to go a little bit different. Uh, in here, I want it, our main web application is fine, but the output folder, I actually want this to output into the public directory of our new Rails app. So if I come back to my sites directory, you'll see we have a web orb directory. And inside the web orb directory uh, is our public folder. I'm going to create a new one in here called web orb and choose that as the destination. The URL for this is going to be HTTP colon slash slash localhost. And our Rails app is going to run on port 3000 for right now. Uh, the public directory is automatic, and then we specify web orb as our end location. With that done, we can click finish, and we will be good to go. Inside our Flex application, uh, we can just do a real quick here, just test to make sure everything's working. And we're going to go ahead and hit run. Now, this should fail for us because it's going to try and launch it on port 3000. And we haven't started our Rails ser uh, server yet. So from inside of our terminal, we're going to type script server. And we'll see that this is launching and now running on port 3000. So now we can refresh this and see that we are actually able to hit our webworb.html. Well, that's all fine and good, but not very exciting. We certainly didn't connect to Flex. So let's return to Flex Builder. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that. And what we want to do is use, uh, to connect to Web Orb, we use the remote object tag. And we're going to say MX remote object here. We're going to give it an ID of RO. We're going to specify the destination of this as info service. And we're going to specify that our endpoint is our Web Orb controller. With that done, the only other thing we really want to do is specify an, volt, uh, sorry, an event handler for our result and fault events. So we're going to say, call that on result and pass in the event object. We'll do the same thing for fault.
and end our tag. Now in order for those to actually function, we need to create that function. Yeah. In order for those to work, we have to create our function. We're going to say MX script here. And inside here, we're going to create a public function called onResult. Takes in a, uh, an event, type result event. And returns no data. And you know what? Because our event is going to be different, we're going to go ahead and create a public function on fault as well. Event call of type fault event. And that's not going to return any data either. We're going to go ahead and change this function we created to on fault. And now we'll see that when we make a request against here, it's going to use the local functions to tell us the data about it. So I'm going to go ahead and put breakpoints on these. So the only thing it's left to actually do is call some method on RO. Well, we know that our destination for this is our info service object. And if we return to TextMate, we can see we have a function in there called getComputerInfo. What we're going to do is call that method from our Flex application on creation complete. So I'm going to add a result ha or you know, event handler here for creation complete and have that call ro.getComputerInfo passing in some string. Of course we have to do actual correct ticks here to escape our uh, quotes. And now our OCL compiler is going to go away and we are good to go. We should be able to debug this application now and have it fire us off. We'll see that we have in fact stopped on our breakpoint for our on result, which means it returned the results correctly. Uh, if we inspect our event, we'll see that we have a result that actually includes all of the information that was passed back from our uh, get info. So here they created a, a computer info object, which is much like having an object or um, a hash is like a generic object or a, in Java or in uh, ActionScript, and they populate that with information using uh, name, key, name key value pairs. So very cool. Well, what if you wanted to do something else? Let's just play with this real quick, and we'll say def, and we'll create a new function called getString. Inside getString, we're just going to return, hey, I am a string. That's it. Now we can update our, we're going to stop this debug session, and we'll update our, um, our method call on creation complete to just call get string. We're going to run our application one last time. And we'll see that when we debug, this time our result is actually just the string. Hey, I'm a string. So that's it. That's all there is to connecting WebOrb into a Flex application and being able to connect to Ruby on Rails from Flex.